King of Sports. New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've been watching this guy since I was in high school. He is a pioneer. He is a trailblazer. I mean, a pro wrestling, a mixed martial arts. You know, for all intents and purposes, this is a dream match, without a doubt. This was a dream match that I wanted. This was a dream match that I had, that I had taken away from me, and now it's been given to me. I mean, on the biggest stage possible, in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. This is as big as it gets. Yeah. Suzuki is tenured, he is experienced, he has been here for a long time, but this is a big chance for me to prove to this company, to prove to you know, the office, to prove to Minoru Suzuki himself that not only do I belong here, but yeah, I you know, belong in the ring with Minoru Suzuki. I can beat Minoru Suzuki, I can whoop his ass, I kind of want to really beat his ass. All right, I don't know if you can use that, but... You think you're king? You think I give a rat's ass who you are? Or what you've accomplished, or what you're made of, or whatever, or where you're from. I'm gonna f you up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, featuring the Showdown Tour. I am Matthew Raybal, joined by Alex Kozlov, and we have yet another night of incredible action. And we kick it all off with a debut for the first time ever in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. It is the Persian Lion, Arya Davari, taking on a returning Alex Zane. And Alex, we both know exactly what these kind of athletes are capable. What do you think is going to go down in this one? Well, look, first of all, real exciting to see a new face debuted here on Strong in Davari. But Alex Zane is coming back after one year of absence from Strong, and he's looking to ring the Taco Bell off Davari. And next, it'll be the team of Rocky Romero and Fred Rosser taking on Team Filthy's Danny Limelight and the strong openweight champion himself, Tom Lawler. And we know that Fred Rosser has had his eyes, his heart, his soul set on that strong openweight championship. Could tonight be the first step he makes towards getting that opportunity? Well, tonight's certainly the night. You know, uh, different stories and conflicts will play out tonight as Rosser tries to get his hands closer to Tom Lawler. And Rocky Romero certainly wouldn't mind teaching a lesson and putting his hands on someone that he thought was his protege in Daniel Limelight. And tonight we also get to see the never open weight champion himself, Jay White King Switch, makes his presence known as he takes on Fred Yehi. And we know exactly what the savage weight can bring to that ring, but he is a tall task tonight with Jay White. The Switchblade and the current never open weight champion has turned USA into the US of Jay, where opportunities are bountiful. And tonight, that's what it's all about, as he gives an opportunity to Fred Yehi, the savage weight. And in our main event tonight, a first time ever matchup and a dream match for Chris Dickinson as he gets to take on Minoru Suzuki. And Suzuki has been on a tear as he's traveled all across the United States, but I don't know if he's ever quite faced someone like Chris Dickinson. Maybe it's the other way around because this is certainly the biggest match in Chris Dickinson, Dickinson's career. And it's also the biggest fight of his life when he faces off the legend don't call him a legend, Minoru Suzuki. And after 19 years of putting in all the blood, sweat, and tears into this, you know that he's more than prepared. Well, we will find out later tonight. Stay tuned for all the action right here on New Japan Strong.
バッチ20分一本勝負を行います。Well, Matt, it's been a long time since we've seen Alex Zanier on strong. The last time we saw him was on Detonation Tour of 2020 when he defeated Blake. I mean, this man has left an impression on fans all around the world with his matches with guys like Robbie Eagles, with his awe inspiring high flying abilities. He's an incredible athlete. Proving that all over the world. I recently got to see him in,、uh, appearing at Impact Wrestling. All over the world, he's made his presence known. Alex Zane brings something special to every ring he steps into, and he kicks off this episode of New Japan Strong. Ready to return after nearly a year away from New Japan rings, he wants to bring it back and bring it back with style. Yeah, and, you know the last match we saw、uh, of him when he defeated Christian Blake. I mean, he, that one year of absence, he he's not taking time off. Oh, he's God, been、no. very active, wrestling and honing his skills all around for organization,、uh, bigger organizations all around the country, and he's back. But tonight he faces this man who will be making his New Japan Strong debut right here tonight. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Persian Lion, Arya Devari, a man I know very, very well. I've actually called so many of his matches. He was a top cruiserweight in WWE. Making a name for himself with his Smash Mouth style, his、uh, his tactics and his attitude became pretty known as well. And now he's reconnecting with his roots in the pro wrestling world. Now tell me, what is that he's got in his hand over there that he just dropped? It. I mean, that's if you, if anybody knows the history of Arya Devari or whatever, he's been known to use that. In certain circumstances, a matchup. Let's just call it the magic carpet. The magic carpet. I like that. Ari Devari, oh, someone who's always had a bit of a chip on his shoulder, something to prove. Of course, his Middle Eastern Iranian roots, but born and bred in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Lots of wrestling heritage in that city, as well as his brother Sean Devari making a name for himself in the wrestling world. So there is a lot of pro wrestling in the life of Arya Devari. Both of these men have about the same amount of、uh, years of experience in that ring. So this will be a very interesting matchup. Yeah, neither one of these men, even though. We're seeing Alex Zane for the first time in a year. We're seeing Ari Devari debut here. Neither one of these men are rookies in any way, shape, or form. As now the jockeying for position, two cruiserweight athletes doing a little bit of a, a strength test here, a little bit of a test of bullish style here as they lock up and just force each other around the ring. Devari was able to push him, push his way. Push Alex Zane into the corner, exhibiting、uh, strength here. He could be the stronger opponent between the two, but Alex Zane is—you got to be very careful with him. He's quick, agile. He can use the ropes to his advantage. The man can fly. It's right on paper, a very even matchup. There's going to be a lot of action here. And don't forget, speaking of action, later tonight, live on New Japan World. As well as on Fight TV with the English broadcast, it is Battle in the Valley. So tonight we're getting a little preview here on Strong, but make sure you stay tuned later tonight for that incredible event live on Pay Per View. Alex Zane taking Navari over here in this wrestling exchange. You have to imagine it's going to be a very tight back and forth contest. Like I said, on paper very evenly matched. Navari got something to prove. 
out here. He wants to work everywhere. He wants to be everywhere. He's making that first step here with New Japan strong, but I have a feeling you're going to be seeing Arya Davari popping oh, up wow. all over the pro wrestling world as he unloads on Alex Zane. Clubbing him repeatedly, but Alex Zane landing on his feet with a headlock. Oh, nice trip goes under. There. Zane saw that leapfrog coming. And look at that. Oh, oh my oh. God, dropping the knees on the back of Davari. Saw the trip, saw the leapfrog. Zane oh my God. has everything scouted, look laying that. here. That's an interesting pin. Yeah, if you can call it that, I can't imagine. He was resting for a moment. He was resting, <laughs> resting. for three, Yeah, for two. Just catching a breather while covering a man's shoulders to the ground. I love it, and you just saw the innovative aerial offense that he's capable of. That's right, give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Season opening will split it wide open. Alex Zane can do almost anything you can imagine in that ring. Holding on to the headlock, Davari tried to push him off, gain some momentum, but Alex Zane's got a tight headlock on right now. And that's the thing, both these men got something to prove here. Again, like we said, Alex Zane, not being here in a year, wants to prove that he can still be oh. dominant here, can still be impressive in a New Japan ring in this environment. And Arya Davari making his debut, his first appearance here, wants the world to know just exactly who he is. Good extension on that drop kick, taking the head of Alex Zane. Extension, explosiveness, like I said, that smash mouth style of Davari has gotten him to a lot of places. As he looks to tie up Alex Zane in a oh row. Oh my God, did you hear the thud? Oh, oh God. And now tenderizing the meat for the sauce is Arya Davari. And loading up top here. Oh, drops Hangman the leg, leg over drop. Absolutely, into the middle of the ring. But no, two count. But just barely, that, that Alex Zane did not have a very energetic kick out, let's put it that way. Well, after taking that leg drop like that, driving his head to the mat, that took some out of him. Now Davari, oh my God. more chops, clubbing Alex Zane from every single angle. Hitting with everything he's got. And now putting some weight on him. Pulling on those arms. Trying to stretch the shoulders, stretch the arms, stretch the chest that has been already beaten down so badly. Alex Zane recently competing in the X Division title tournament with Impact Wrestling. Arya Davari showing up all over the pro wrestling world. Again, these guys just have so much to prove. Oh! And they want the world to know there's that full Nelson. Reverse DDT into the cover. Goes Arya Davari, but no, Alex Zane stays in this one. And look at the blistered chest of Alex Zane, taking a lot of damage. A lot of punishment here, and you see Arya Davari with that full Nelson. He has a lot of holds into other maneuvers. He uses the hammerlock lariat to finish off so many opponents. And now, got a neck vice of sorts. And now Alex Zane, he's got a bridge up to hold himself up and try to fight the hole. That's a lot of energy expent. Trying to go for the backslide here, Alex Zane. Could be, but Davari fighting him every inch of the way. Davari has been in control, but Overall, this has been a very back and forth contest so far. And this crowd kind of looking for both guys here. Double clothesline. Oh. Both men, same idea. And now both men down on the mat. And these two have been going back and forth. Neither of them wants to make any unnecessary mistakes because a win here on this platform, on New Japan Strong here in Philly, would make a great statement for, for, the, for them and for where they can one, go. Absolutely. There's something about a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring that you know that very well. It just, it hits different as they say. No you know doubt what about I mean? it. It's not like any other wrestling ring. It's not like any other wrestling show. Unlike any other. 
there is a style, there is a respect, there is a sense of honor in this ring that is not oh. matched many other places as Alex Zane looks to take the head off of Arya Davari. And now the sauce is getting spicy here, Alex, as he starts to light up the Persian lion. And now he's gonna need all the magic that that magic carpet oh, wow. can muster. But that flipping leg drop, maybe a little repayment for that leg drop across the back of the head that Ari Davari dropped earlier. Zane giving his own twist on the maneuver. And now Alex Zane firmly in control of this contest. A cinnamon twist of sorts. Sure, absolutely. And now paying back some of those chops as well as he looks to tenderize the chest of Davari. Oh, catches the boot. Oh! Davari not done yet. Both men lighten each other up. The sparks are flying in Philadelphia. Oh, catches him with that jumping neck breaker. Huge neck breaker. And now could be going. Oh, oh my God. Hammerlock DDT could be setting up. Looks like a cover. Like I said, he likes to put opponents away with that hammerlock lariat. That just one of the many innovative maneuvers we saw. What a vicious hammerlock DDT just creating more force as he drives the head of his opponent. That's right. And also you can see he's taking some damage to that shoulder neck area. Both men taking a lot of damage, but Ari Davari. Could be looking for it. There we go, setting up that hammer lock. Lariat Zane saw it coming. Gives him a kick for his effort. And now Davari forced to the outside. This is what Alex Zane is so good at. Alex Zane goes oh, to the Oh my God! My goodness. The innovation. Springboard backflip right on top of Davari. But not just any kind of springboard Three. moonsault. I mean, he's from the inside to the outside over the rope. Incredible control from Alex Zane. And now Davari as he tries to put Zane back down on the oh mat. Oh my God. Oh! Flips into the hurricane run, catches Davari. And now Zane looking to close this one out. Oh, oh my goodness. Plants him. Into the cover goes Zane, but Davari stays in this one. What? The innovation I've seen here from Alex Zane, and I've seen him several times in action, just keeps continuing to impress. That is what's so exciting about him and why he's had so much success all around the country. And it's exciting to have him back here on Strong. Now both men here gotta be looking for their, their final salvo, their closing shot as we look. He looks to tie up Davari here. Little necktie action. Davari fights his way out of it, though. Oh! And super kick, catching Zane upside of the head. And here He's we're going, going for, for that it. hammerlock oh! lariat, and he gets absolutely all of it. And now, it might get a little magical here. Magic ride. In Philly. Magic carpet. Might be time to go for a magic carpet ride. Oh, you don't know. Yes, oh! you do, but no, it's a miss. Zane saw it coming. And then he calls this the taco driver. Taco driver hits. That's a three. Wow. And that's the win for Alex Zane. Well, I got to tell you, both men very impressive. After a year absent from a New Japan ring, Alex Zane comes back and lets the world know makes the world remember, remind them just who in the hell he is. And who he is is a very impressive and dangerous athlete, but make, take nothing away from Arya Davari, who made an impression here in his New Japan Strong debut. Very impressive. Now both men still standing in the ring though. Look at this, Alex Zane. Zane. And you know what, Arya Davari normally normally doesn't play nice with others. He doesn't, I haven't seen him accept a whole lot of handshakes in his career. Well, look, this could be a new chapter. This is uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
We can be different. He's got to be careful, Alex. I've seen a, a lot of people kicked, punched, slapped, who tried to extend that hand. And Arya Davari, wow. Is this another side? Could of be. Ari Davari that you're seeing here? We told you that there's something about this New Japan ring. It brings an honor, it brings a respect. Maybe that's rubbed off on Arya Davari just a little bit. Either way, I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited to see some more of Arya Davari in New Japan Strong. But for tonight, it is that man. It is Alex Zane. It is the sauce that reigns supreme and reminds us all just who he is. Welcome back, Alex Zane. Don't forget, Battle in the Valley comes to you later tonight. You thought this action was great. Make sure you tune into that on New Japan World and Fight TV. And you will see more people, more action like you just saw from Alex Zane. So tonight didn't go how I wanted it to go on my debut for New Japan. But I can't take anything away from Alex Zane. He's a hell of a competitor, but there's just something that's been on my mind. It's distracting me a little bit. See, when I first came into the locker room, everybody was kind of staring at me. They were looking at me up and down, staring daggers through me. And I realized it's, it's because I came from over there, because of where I used to work. And I kind of made a reputation for myself of using underhand tactics, breaking the rules. Hell, I'll mercifully beat somebody with a steel chair. But the problem is that I was just a product of my environment. I was trying to fit the status quo. And when you work somewhere that's kind of the wild, wild west, and they don't take the sport of professional wrestling seriously, that's the kind of shit that happens to you. But they don't do that here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Now, I want to change. I want to prove that I can change. And I'm not going to say that it's going to happen overnight. That's impossible. But this environment, this place, this promotion, it can at least elicit that change. It can start that change in Aria Divari. Thank you. Oh, it's time. It is. It's time. This is the music of the number one guy. The best strutter in the business he is the current strong open weight champion here, accompanied by a very charismatic Danny Limelight. I know you're not a fan of these, but you got to give him props. I, I, I may not be a fan of some of their attitude, I may not be a fan of some of their tactics, but there is no taking away from the ability oh, of yeah. Team Filthy and their competitors, especially that man, Tom Lawler. Never been pinned, never been submitted here on Strong. That is a record that no one else, to my knowledge, can say on this roster. Oh. Oh, yes. Your favorite. You got to admit, he's got a hell of a strut. He's got a strut. Struts have, and there is a long history of struts in the pro wrestling business. But Tom Lawler is up there. All the strutters in the business have been successful. <laughs> I said, you know what? It's true. It's not, it, you're not wrong. Remember, it was last week we had Danny Limelight joining us here at the table, espousing the greatness of Team you were Filthy. There? I know, I'm sure it was hard to forget, but tonight it is a different team that they have to face. It is Fred Rosser and his partner, Rocky Romero, who will take on Team Filthy. And these guys have got a little, you know, a little bit of experience with Team Filthy, don't they, Alex? Yes, they, uh, they've been working real well together. They actually uh, faced off against Daniel Limelight and J.R. Kratos being victorious. I mean, uh, they have chemistry together. And, and Fred Rosser, who has recently 
you know, challenge uh, Minoru Suzuki, that which was a dream match for him, was unsuccessful. But, you know, all he's ever wanted here on Strong has been itching, itching to get his hands on Tom Lawler and the most important thing for him, that Strong Openweight Championship. Fred Rosser, you, you know the phrase, no days off, he meets it. Go, go ahead, Alex. Make 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 your Rocky joke. Your your friend, the person who helped you, you know, attain all the success you ever attained. Go, you know, Fred Rosser's, you know, no days off. What 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 is, what is Rocky? Please tell him because we haven't heard it enough. I I wasn't gonna say anything bad about Rocky Romero. Look, the man clearly has 24 years of experience. He's a veteran. Yes. He's a former Black Tiger, fourth incarnation. The man has been around the block. He just okay. doesn't know how to keep a partner. That's all I'm saying. I mean, just look at the history. The last one was Daniel Limelight. Who we tried very much to help and who had his hands slapped away by Danny Limelight. Look, Daniel Limelight made a, the right decision for his career ever since he's joined Team Filthy. He's been, he's been doing really, really good. Well, we'll see how that plays out here tonight as Lawler trades jorts for jorts and he's added a little bit of fringe tonight here alex maybe that'll give him a little extra pizzazz a little extra luck i mean the man is just style personified all the style in the world may not save him when rocky romero and fred rosser get their hands on him we know fred rosser has made it very clear as this match begins that he has his eyes set on that strong open weight championship but it will be hard to pry from the hands of Tom Lawler and you know uh, Fred Rosser and Tom Lawler they have been voted by fans to have one of the best matches of the year in 2020 when they did face each other That's absolutely a lot of history true. in this match a lot of history between the competitors now it all comes to a head you mentioned it earlier Rocky Romero and Fred Rosser have defeated Team Filthy Kratos and Limelight, now they get a chance to go for the leader of Team Filthy, Tom Lawler. Oh! oh the disrespect continues. Ah, you so can, You can cha-cha slide all you want, Danny. Oh, You're going to get punched God. in the mouth eventually. I guess he did have it coming there. Oh, he's going for the armbar right away. Going for it, Danny. Trying to get away, squiggling, squirreling his way away, and Tom Lawler pulls Smart. his buddy to safety. Smart move. Because you have to imagine if Rocky Romero would have gotten that on, it would have been tap out time for Danny Limelight. Giving him an adjustment. He's a chiropractor too, apparently. The man is a, He's a jack of all trades, except he is very good at one thing, and that's being Ooh. a champion. Rocky Romero, multi-time champion here in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh! Been doing this for so long, but still has this, this agility, this fire, this fight. Oh! He presses every time he steps through those ropes. And there, you want a little shimmy, you want a little shake. There you go, Danny. Still trying to teach a lesson to Daniel Limelight for... Uh, trying to show him how it's done is what the words you were looking for. Trying, trying. And so far, he's doing real good in showing. There, there's the teamwork, there's the tactics he of happened, Team Filthy. He happened to uh, stumble upon the, the knee of Tom Lawler on happened the other side. to stumble upon, fantastic. Your revisionist history never fails to amuse. As now the team, I'll take nothing away, they oh. work well, like a well-oiled machine. As Lawler into the cover here, kick out by Romero. Look, I mean, Fred Ross and Rocky Romero have, has have got a win over Kratos and Daniel Limelight. Lawler had to step in and make things right. Look at that hammerlock. Look at the, the way that, where he has his body and how much is twisting on that arm. I mean, he is a submission specialist. He knows how to manipulate the human body. He could turn you into a pretzel three times without you even knowing how. We've seen him do that to Ren Narita. That's how he beat him. We've seen him do it to multiple opponents over the better part of the last year or so. 
an incredible run, an incredible reign for Tom Lawler. I mean, he beat Hikuleo and Brody King in the finals to attain that, what is now a very prestigious title, the most important title here on Strom. Uh, driving the foot into the sternum of Rocky Romero, pushing the wind out of him, and now locking him up here. And Tom Waller, he's got all the swagger in the world, but he backs it up with he a long and impressive look, resume. Look at that ankle lock. How do you get out of that? Almost got his legs in almost a figure four lock with the ankle lock applied as well. And now tagging in Danny Limelight to do some extra damage. And you know, for all the swagger Danny Limelight has, I, you know, I can't take away, the guy is an intense athlete. He's got a long history of military service as well. He knows discipline, he knows intensity, he brings a lot to the ring. Look, maybe his uh, loud mouth, and maybe you're confusing his charisma with disrespect, but the man knows how to co command respect in that ring. He does it in his own way. He certainly does have a unique way of showing it. As now, once again, Tom Lawler just tying the legs, knees, and ankles. Oh! Rocky Romero went into a pretzel, into a knot. That impressive submission, that MMA background that we've covered so much of Tom Lawler always coming into play. Rocket trying desperately, and he gets the rope to break the submission here. The wherewithal of Rocky Romero to find that bottom rope. You know when you get tied up like some, from someone like Tom Lawler, you're going to have to look for that. But look, you got to admit, uh, Things are now looking good for the team of Rocky Romero and Fred Rosser right now. Rock is on the and other side of the spectrum here. Done such a good job of cutting this ring off, keeping oh. Rocky in their corner, and now the double. I don't even what, is it shimmy and shake? Hip cha-cha slide? What, I, what do we call it? Let's just call it the cha-cha. Okay. It's cha-cha cheap. Anyway. Nothing taken away from the well-oiled machine that is Team Filthy, keeping Rocky completely isolated from Fred Rosser. And Fred Rosser hasn't even stepped foot into this matchup. Since the bell, it has been all Rocky Romero. So kudos to him for staying in this, for, for kicking out of everything, for staying in this matchup. Well, look, I mean, if he doesn't even get a chance to get in the ring, I mean, th th this could be an easy one for uh, Team Filthy. Could if try. As a Danny Lime right now trying to grab Fred Rosser from the outside. Oh, and now he gets in the ring, gets lured in by Tom Lawler. Yeah, he, he, he was struck, he was by Team Filthy. Fred Rosser, he's not legal in this matchup yet, but he's gotten himself drawn into this fight. He got drawn in, and what a great strategy here. Now they've neutralized a man that hasn't even been legal. Well, Rock is still recovering from the beatdown. And now both men in a deficit, it's true. Say what you want, but that tactic was effective. And now just picking the bones of Rocky Romero is Tom Lawler. And Rocky, Rocky doesn't have a partner to tag. He's, He's all, all alone. alone. Oh. Tom Lawler looked, thought he was going to go for a cover there. Look now at that. raining down fists. And he's got that knee over the stomach of Rocky, holding him there. Pinning his target to the mat. And this is what Lawler is so good at. He will wear you down, pick you apart. That's what, that's why he's been so successful. Oh! Rocky pulling on a year. Taking the advantage he can see. Questionable tactic here. Gets that quick roll up, but now once again, Lawler that. tying the legs up. And you see there, Rocky reaching for the corner. There is no one to be found. Fred Rosser has not recovered yet. Oh my oh. God. Into the arm bar, Rocky somehow tried, but Danny Limelight there to make the save in time, any time the Rocky Romero's had an opening. Great Limelight awareness. Limelight has been there. Tom Lawler's got that knee lock. A knee bar applied dead center of the ring. But it is oh! Rosser who hits that almost running senton, that seated senton, breaking up that submission. And now 
Now Ross, you have to imagine, not only angry, eager to get in, but angry at the Frustrated. treatment. Yes, from before, from Team Filthy. Oh! Catches him with the reverse kick, and Rocky finally makes the tag! But Lawler quickly tags out as well. And oh my move. God! Back body drop, Fred Rosser, house of fire, house of anger, looking to get a little bit of revenge, get a little bit of payback here for what Team Filthy just did to him. Drawing him into that match, taking some cheap shots, and now it is Fred Rosser just letting Danny Limelight know with these hard forearm shots, just letting him know. Shade's almost Big Van Vader here with these clubbing. Oh my arms. God! Knocks him silly with that rolling elbow. Taking no days off as Danny Limelight tries to finesse his way out of this one. Fred Rosser keeps on rolling, fighting off Tom Lawler. Watch out! Watch out! Dangerous grounds here. Limelight tries to go for a Hurricanrana, but the strength of... Oh, pulling him up in a very dangerous position here for both athletes as Rosser comes out from underneath, stopping Danny Limelight on the top rope. And that was a very dangerous situation. Both men could have tumbled to the floor very easily. Now Fred Rosser, oh, oh. with a high crucifix position here. Oh, wait a minute. Sunset flip from Danny Limelight could be it here. No, Rosser kicks out at two. Incredible counter there, the way he hooked the feet around the shoulders of Fred Rosser out of that crucifix. Impressive, and it shows intuition. And somebody only, somebody with experience could do something like that. I mean, he... The intuition wherewithal of Danny Limelight oh! going for that kick. Rosser saw it coming. The intensity of Fred Rosser. Could be looking for that gut buster. Watch but out, watch out. Watch out. Oh! Lawler in the ring with the kick to the face. He's got that rear naked chokehold. Wait a minute. Rosser turns it around, could be looking for his own gut buster again. Oh. Uses Lawler as a weapon, kicking Danny Limelight. And now oh. Rocky. Rocky with his shirt and Nui on. Daniel Limelight looking to fly. And Suicide now. dive. Taking out Limelight on the outside, looking for that gut oh! buster. Nails it on Tom Lawler. Kick oh. to the side of the face, into the cover goes Fred One. Rosser. Oh Ooh. my God. So close. Just for, for a moment, I thought we were gonna see for the first time that Tom Lawler get pinned in this ring. It was so very close, but Lawler finds a way to kick out like he always, always does. But no, once again, snapping on, looking for that sleeper hold. Going for that spine muscle, but drops him on the top rope. And now he's got it. Now he's got it locked in. Bad place for Fred Rosser to be locked into this sleeper hole. And it's in there real tight. The blood has been cut off. Trying to get to the ropes. Might be his only way of escaping this. Can't Tom breathe. Waller. Oh, he's going. That's it. Looks to lock it. Wait a minute. Wait. No, position. no. Are you kidding me? Are you? That's it. Alex, is this he real? Him. He just pinned him one, two, three. That's the first time we've ever seen that. But hold on a second. Tom Lawler had him in the rear naked chokehold. How in the world are you? Tom Lawler has just been pinned for the first time in a New Japan strong ring by Fred Rosser, and he is none too pleased. I don't believe what I just witnessed. I don't think any of us can. We did not expect that to happen anytime soon. But Fred Rosser showing wherewithal. And Team Filthy is furious. As furious as ever, and they're looking to punish Fred Rosser. Now Danny Limelight, what is it, what's he grabbing under the ring? Well, it looks he's like got he's a, got a toolbox. A tool kit, something. As Lawler just choking and punishing Rosser in the corner, he's oh got to be absolutely God. irate. I mean, this yeah, is... But I mean, can you, can you blame him? He just got pinned for the first... I can't. What is this now? Come on, I know you just lost, Tom. I know you just had your first loss here in New Japan, but it's not worth this. You don't need to do anything crazy here. I mean, look, this is the old ECW arena. Thank God. There we go, Rocky. Come on. I mean, clearly Tom Lawler and Danny Limelight not thinking straight. Get because we are in disbelief of oh. what just happened. 
Here comes the cavalry. Of course. Well, let's just forget what happened. Let's just forget what happened. Okay, Team Filthy is out here to restore order. Restore let's order or cause chaos? Both. But let's just erase from our memories what we just witnessed because it was a fluke. Nobody can. Fluke, no, you can call it that all you want. But Fred Rosser has pinned the open weight champion, the strong open weight champion, Tom Lawler, one, two, three to the mat. It is indisputed. It happened. He did. He did. <laughs> Don't remind me of it. But now, uh, whether out of rage, whether out of embarrassment, whether out of anger, he has driven the life out of Fred Rosser with the help of Team Filthy. And shame, too. I mean, he's ashamed that he just took for the first time a pin. But what, what, what are they going to do with these scissors? We know how dangerous Team Filthy can be just with their fists and their feet. Well, Fred Rosser is unconscious. Now, yeah, Fred Rosser, he's not with it. He is prone. He is vulnerable to whatever the hell Tom Lawler has in mind here. Just holding the arms of Fred Rosser. Got a pair of scissors. What's he gonna do? He's gonna try. Oh, he's, oh, and he's he's cutting the hair of Fred Rosser. He's just trying to oh, embarrass wow. him now. Wow. This is shameful. This is shameful, Alex. Come on, like what? Just because you got embarrassed, because you let your guard down and got pinned by an athlete like Fred Rosser, and now just trying to add insult to all the injury, to the add insult to the beat down you just gave him. Wow, well, he is completely just lost it. Just butchering the hair of Fred Rosser. Again, simply trying to embarrass the man. Look, I mean, he has just experienced his, oh my God, that is filthy. Living that, up to his name. That is truly filthy. My God. After witnessing Tom Lawler get pinned for the first time here on Strong, he cuts the hair of Tom Lawler after choking him out and chewing on his hair. Fred Ross, literally. My God. Chewing Fred Rosser up and spitting him out. Oh, filthy Tom Lawler has made an example out of Fred Rosser. Well, this but let's not forget. Let's not let this moment, let's not let this tactic, let's not let this heinous action take away from the fact that it was Fred Rosser who pinned the strong openweight champion. I hope that that means down the line we're going to see Fred Rosser get some sort of revenge, get some sort of comeuppance, hopefully get a shot at that championship title Look, for I, this action. Yes, he, he did pin Tom Lawler, one, two, three, but I don't think I've seen this side of Tom Lawler, this level of filthy. Took filthy to a whole new level, you're absolutely right. Shameful actions from Team Filthy. as they made an absolute example out of Fred Rosser. Man. Rocky Fans. Romero, who tried his best to save his friend, his partner. The power of Team Filthy was just too much to overcome. And what a, what a ridiculous and heinous situation. Unnecessary as well. Fred Ross is just doing what any of us do. You know that as a competitor. I know that as a competitor. You go to, you try to win. And yeah. when that one, two, three, that ding, ding, ding happens. You expect to uh, celebrate the victory, a once in a lifetime victory. You and expect if you to lose, be you rewarded. Expect, you expect to, to hand, to, whether, you don't really not shake their hand, but to bow out gracefully, take your licks and come back next time. This is certainly not a celebration for Fred Rosser. Not the celebration it should have been. Man. But he takes no days off, and he is not going to take a single moment off of thinking about what Tom Lawler did to him tonight. 
You thought his eyes were set on filthy Tom Lawler. You thought his eyes were set on that open weight championship before. That has just increased tenfold, you have to imagine, after this. Things, things have gotten real personal between them. There's some serious bad blood now. I mean, damn, Fred Rosser. Clearly very emotional. Tom Lawler took it to another level tonight. Wow. Some people might look at it and they say, hey, it's just hair or whatever, you get a haircut. It's not that simple for a lot of people. No. It means so much more. And to someone like Fred Rosser, takes pride in who he is, not letting people do that to him, not letting people walk all over him. Living his life strong, living his life proud. Well, so to have someone do, do something like that, to treat him like that, you uh, know he won't forget it. Well, he he just experienced the, the very thing that he fights for, bullying. He just got bullied. And you know that he won't forget it. Tokon Shop Global. We ship worldwide. Why, buddy? You finished those Okada orders yet? Yeah, with the new Team Filthy shirt, Papi. Genius. Eso, mi gente. The stars of today and the legends of the past come together on your smartphone. NJPW Collection. Pick up cards from special draft events. Use your collected cards to form your own faction or exchange them for limited edition special cards. Check in live from venues or remotely from home to get special tickets and items. Add all of New Japan Pro Wrestling to your collection now. NJPW Collection. We have an incredible contest. And ladies and gentlemen, I am absolutely honored to be joined here at ringside by the legendary Tiger Hitori to watch this contest firsthand. Thank you so much. Thank you so much I'm for so being excitement. here. so excitement. Hitori sounds in the listener. <laughs> yes. Long time no see. Yeah. Good to see you. As we have Fred, yee hi. Yes, apparently that's how you got to say You got to say yee. Hi. Good Young name. Smash Mouth competitor. Been very impressive here on New Japan Strong. Uh, Tiger, I believe this is your first time seeing this young man wrestle? Yes, first time. I feel so excited. Yes. <laughs> you will certainly be impressed by him. Nine year pro. He calls himself the Savage Weight. Very technical, innovative, new oh, generation. Very hard hitting. New style. Yes. And effective. Fits the strong style. 
mentality very, very well. But he will have he will have a very tall task in his opponent tonight. You know the man. You know the music. It's the switchblade. Switch himself, the current never open weight champion. Tiger, you've, you've known Jay White. You remember when he was a young lion. Yes, very much. But now he's an international star. Yes. Known all over the world. Won matches and championships everywhere he goes. The first Grand Slam champion he's held every major major title in new japan pro wrestling he calls this the u.s of j oh yeah <laughs> yeah exactly he thinking like that yes very confident bordering on maybe i, I know alex you won't like it bordering on arrogance but he does have every skill in the book to back it up oh man give it to him tiger yeah. Yeah. that's it if Tiger throws it up, of course, I don't. I never get to throw it up. Not that I would anyway. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, he had a little respect. Little, little, maybe a little. It's, yeah, it's a okay. Little it's but okay. still cocky, though. Yes. <laughs> He's <Very> cocky. <laughs> For good reason, though. <laughs> Well, here's an interesting thing about Jay White. I mean, he's giving Fred Yehai an opportunity here. The same kind of opportunity that Tanahashi gave Jay White. And he took that opportunity and looked at the man that he has become in the last four years. He has amassed so many accomplishments. And he's given back. He's a good man. Yeah. Look like it's really good. He looks great. He is, I mean... No, you can't say enough about the accomplishments of Jay White and what he's done in a relatively short time in New Japan. When you really look at it, like you said, a couple of years, he's mounted every championship there is to win in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's aligned himself and seemingly took over the Bullet Club as well. He's a leader yeah. amongst other wrestlers. Yeah, he believes in himself, but yeah. he can make it. He backs it up in the ring. Yeah. It's that belief in himself that has allowed him to, to reach such heights and become one of the greatest leaders of the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club has never been stronger. But exactly. Bullet Club is always, is always a tumultuous force, always an imposing force. But as has happened in the past, sometimes cracks form. I mean, I, I breaking news a little bit here, New Japan pro wrestler, and Bullet Club member show actually showed up in my Twitch chat the other night. This is a true what? story. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Drama King Matt, check it out. Uh, and told me that he says evil is the real leader of Bullet Club. Whoa, 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 so maybe wait, there's yeah. some conflict there. Wait a minute. Don't try to stir the pot here, Matt, okay? I do not believe that for one second. As Fred Yehai is in control here. Impressive start from Fred Yehai. Yeah, he looks in good shape. Great shape, lot of strength, hits very hard, hits very fast. And seemingly, you would think that this is sort of a cold match, but there is a little bit of a backstory here as Jay White did defeat Fred Ehi's tag team partner, Wheeler Yuta. Oh. Back at Fighting Spirit Unleashed. Oh, oh he's whoa. going for the Koji oh. Clutch. That is his finishing wow. maneuver. And Jay White. Good. That, that's his finishing maneuver, and J.Y. very quickly getting to the ropes. <laughs> very early on, Fred Yehai showing the never open weight champion just how dangerous he can be. Looking to even the score for his tag team partner, Wheeler Yuta, perhaps here tonight. But you know what, J.Y. very methodical and tactical. He knows exactly when to strike, and now he's in control. Yeah, he knows the position by the yeah. corners. Little by little, put them in the corner. Exactly. 
Exactly, he's got Fred Yeha in a corner, oh. chopping away. But Yeha... With delivering some chops of his own, able to turn around. Look at there, there's just that oh, smash mouth it. style. Ooh. Going for a chop. Jay White saw it come and gets to the ropes. Yeah, Jay White knows the next move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is exactly right. That's what's made him so successful is he's always two, three moves ahead of you. He's a very intelligent competitor. Always trying to outthink or get in the head of his opponent, outsmart them. Now, Tiger, were you, were you chaos or were you more leaning towards Bullet Club? Were you more chaos? I don't know exactly. I'm looking at both sides, but... Very diplomatic. So much characters, you know. A lot of characters. And Fred Yehai oh. just giving Jay White the opening, telling him, give me your best shot. And look at uh, Yehai with and a smirk he's on his face. smiling. Oh. Says you might. Go ahead. Oh. Take another one. Oh! Oh my, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> It's uh, good. He fight, fires fight. back. Yes. Yeah, I, <laughs> not showing any fear. And still giving Jay the opening. Says, try. Hit me harder. Here, going chop for chop. Oh. Who can handle him? And now it's Fred Yehai's turn. Oh! And as you've known, Jay White, smart. Yeah, smart by sneaky. He very, sneaky. <laughs> very sneaky. Yes. Like a snake in the grass, he strikes hey. at the right moment. He strikes at the right moment, but he's not a snake in the grass. <laughs> Whatever you say as he drives Red Gee high. Spine first into the rail, into the ring. And just like that. See, Freddie, yeah, he won. He took all the shots from Jay White. He took, he wow. said, open hands back, hands back. All, all he wanted was Jay White to return the favor, but yeah. Jay said no. <laughs> well, look, at th that wasn't a, a smart game to play. Well, he's going to play his own game now as he has the arm of Jay White wrapped up here wow. in this ring. Strong guy. Uh, you will see right now an exhibition of his technicality. Fred Yeha is very technical. Look at that. Ooh. Wow. Every move is different to me. <laughs> yes. He's innovative. He's new school. Spinning arm, arm breaker of sorts on the mat. And now oh. Jay, oh. floater suplex of sorts over the top rope, putting for Yai back to the outside. Jay knows all the position. Yes. Knows exactly where he is in the ring, his positioning. The wherewithal to, yeah, be able to manipulate, put your opponent exactly where you need them to be. And lure them into the positions that are advantageous to you. He's always a couple of steps ahead. Yes, I think so too. Oh! Ooh. Huge belly to back, Jay White into the cover. One count, and Fred Yehai kicks out. Now this is a non-title match, you know, but that title that he came out with, the, the, never, the never open weight championship, he beat, defeated Tanahashi wow. in Fukuoka. They battled for 39 minutes. Grueling oh, match. Oh, yes. I remember that. And anybody who knows anything about pro wrestling oh. in New Japan knows that Tanahashi, that name carries a lot of weight. So to defeat a competitor like that is very, very impressive. And into the cover goes Jay White one more time. Freddie Yai kicks out at one, one more time. Now driving the knee into the back, pulling on that chin. Not only do you have to worry about getting out of this position for, for Yehai, but it's harder to, to breathe your weight. You're spending a lot of energy coming from, from the bottom like that. Yeah, exactly, man. Jay knows this. Yes. He knows this, and yeah. he's taking advantage of it. And he's in firm control of Fred Yi, who's got all the oh, fighting boy. spirit in the world. Oh, boy. But against a competitor, the likes of Jay White. Look at it, just. And he's still, he's still here, standing willing to take the punishment. Well, Yi Hai is the savage weight, and he can take a lot. Uh, we're, now we're back here. Claiming, oh! Trying to get the cheap shot again, but it is Yi Hai who saw it coming. Oh, he just runs oh. through it. And an exploder oh. suplex. 
of super. his own. Impressive, the power yeah. of this young, very promising athlete in Yehi. Yeah, he must be good at amateur listening back then. Yes, yes, exactly. I see the kid cutting for all. Everyone on one side. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Got that throwing power to Zihai, and now there's that intensity. Driving those knees into the chest of Jay White. And now the momentum is turned firmly in the corner of Fred Yehai. Can you imagine what a win for Fred Yehai would mean for his career? Yeah, big opportunity. Huge. If you were to pin, like you said, maybe it's not, still non-title, but if you were to pin the never open weight champion, that would have huge implications for your career and your status here on New oh. Japan Strong. Boy. Explosive. Yeah, I never see it like that. He is new school personified. He's taken the old and innovated, changed it, modified it, and so effective at it. New star coming, huh? Yeah? Could be. Oh, my. As we see him bring the fight to one of New Japan's best. Fred Yehai has a way out of almost everything. He's kind of matching Jay White here, now locking in the abdominal stretch right in the center of the ring. And you can see he's got his right leg wrapped over the right leg of Jay White, which makes it harder for Jay White to escape. He's trying to move. He's going to get to the ropes. He's got to carry the weight of two men. That's right. To get to the ropes. Almost. Yes. Oh. And there. Using yeah. whatever tactic he can. There's that sneaky style you're talking yeah. about. Cheap. <laughs> See, we agree on something. Come on, guys. I mean. It's a little cheap. I mean, he uses what's in front of him. Which is cheap. And now, boom, now again, now using the ropes. He uses the ropes as a weapon. He uses the ropes. Oh. His opponent's eyes. Snap DDT drops Freddy uh, in the middle of the ring. Both of these men have about the same amount of uh, wrestling experience, about oh. nine years. Obviously, wow. the career of Jay White has taken, you know, a uh, different direction. He's shot up to the top very Ooh. quickly in the last four Spinning years. Spinning suplex, oh, puts Yehai down, Jay White into the cover, one, two, and a kick out by Fred Yehai. And that is what Yehai Fred Yehai did. Very. And they have been wrestling about the same amount of time. You're right, but Jay White had had the breakout moments. Freddie I could be on the verge of having something similar. He could potentially go on a run that could be similar to what Jay White yeah, has he experienced. Could be. could be. This could very well be his breakout moment. Potential. Jay looking like he could be going for another one of those exploder suplexes, but Yehai fighting him down, grabbing him, goozling him. Oh! And a back fist. Good timing. Talking about seeing the opportunity. And there's a sleeper hold from the Savage Waste. And he's got his arms all over him. Now grabbing the waist. Now Jay White there, smart, tripping. Oh, look at that. Back. Yeah, what a move. Have you seen an athlete like I've that before? Seen it, but Jay White Whoa. rolling over into a cover. He has got to let go of that sleeper, oh. and now unloads with a chop of his own. Looking for a German oh. suplex and nails Jay oh, White. Boy. Could Thank be looking to close it out. Oh, brain buster oh. right in the middle of the ring. Yeha into the cover. Could be. No. Almost. And oh, he's got is. the Koji clutch again. Oh. Floating right into that Koji clutch. And the Jay, Jay White, the never open weight champion, is in the dead center of the ring. This is a bad place to be if you are Jay White right now. He is in trouble, big trouble. Yeah, big one. But Jay looked at all over now. He's looking, where Could is the be. rope? Yes. Struggling, crawling to get oh, there. Oh, and now clubbing him to the temple. That's what. And look at Jay, look at the face. He's look at fainting. the eyes of Jay yeah, White. Yeah, almost sleep. Almost. Oh. Oh. Barely having the intuition to be able to itch his way right to the rope. But you got to wonder how much was taken out of Jay White in that submission. Exactly. Well, we could see on his face, he looked like he was going to sleep. Yes. He's taking Jay White to his limit here. He's 
Fred Yehi is now got to be looking for that closing shot. Got to be looking for that one thing that's going to potentially put Jay White away and stamp a huge note on his career so far. Oh, that good chop. Loving chop. I mean, you could hear the thud completely taking Jay White off his feet. Oh! Oh! Half Nelson oh, suplex boy. dropping Fred Yehi on his head. Very dangerous. He could Very get the much. bump. Could be looking for the Blade Runner here. Oh, Nails it is over. Fred Yehi put it in and is down. Jay White gets the win. What a what a match. Yeah, what a match. But Jay knows the position. That's right. That, that is why he is victorious. He's he's been in this position. He's been in trouble before. He knows how to get the win, but how impressive is yeah. Fred Yehai? Your first oh, time boy. seeing Fred Yehai must have been impressive. Yeah, very much. He has big potential. Lots of potential, a lot of upside to Fred Yehai. Came within moments, within seconds of beating the never open weight champion. But like so many nights before this, it is Jay White who stands tall. And like so many nights before this, Jay White who's got something to say. That's a treat for us. Treat for me. The residents of the US of J showing their support. Citizens. I feel it. Welcome to the US of J, baby! Right. Land of opportunity. Exactly. Oh, oh. I don't know how many of you are witness to it, but uh, come a long way since 2016 against the likes of Jay Briscoe in this ring. That's right. When he went on excursion. Side note, Jay, if me and you wrestle again in here, it won't be a draw, buddy. I'll make light work of you. And hey, that gets me to my point. Over the last few months, I've been on my USFJ tour. He's an international star huh? all much. over the world. I've wrestled people from companies like Impact. People from AEW. Even people from Ring of Honor. I've wrestled the likes of one young Wheeler Utah. I've wrestled the likes of one young and extra fiery Danny Garcia. And, and tonight, I wrestled Fred. Yehi. Fred Yehi. <laughs> he calls him just Fred. To him, it's just Fred. See that, Fred? You're in the ring with me, and they're already chanting your name, even though I kicked your ass. That's what happens when you're in the ring with me. Your stock goes up. People chant your name. People know who you are. So that's why I am opening the door here on New Japan Strong. I'm opening it up. I'm going to open it up with an open invitation to anybody from any company. Oh. Anybody from any company to come in and try their luck against the best in the world. Come and try your luck against Switchblade Jay White, the number one asset in all of pro wrestling, the last rock and roller, and that's real. 
the man that single-handedly sold out Madison Square Garden. Facts. Yes. I am King Switch, baby. I'm the never open weight champion. I am the first Grand Slam champion. That makes me the real, the real bout collector. But before, before anybody else steps in this ring against me, there's one thing that I have to take care of first. As always, it seems to be this one same thing that I always have to take care of before I can move on. I've had the same damn thorn in my side, the same little puppy nipping at my heels for too long now, making my life difficult. So before we step forward through any open door, through any forbidden fucking door, before anybody steps in here for my open invitation, one thing I have to take care of, November 13, San Jose, Battle in the Valley, Tommy, Tom Tom, my buddy, Tommy Hiroishi for the Never Open World Championship. Tomo Hiro Ishii has been, yes. Ishii, Tommy, Tom Tom. It's fucking on. Huge challenge, throw it down. That's a big thing. Big match. Look. Jay White. Wow. Tomohiro Ishii, never open weight championship. Battle in the Valley, November wow. 13th. That will be huge. You cannot miss. No, <laughs> you better not. My God, Ishii has been asking, trying to get the attention of JY, trying to get that match with him. JY has been fending it off because he's already beaten Tom Tom. But you know what? He's been such a thorn in Jay White's way that he finally agreed. And it will happen. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> 本日はご来場誠にありがとうございますお客様にお知らせいたします新日本プロレス公式アプリ新日コレクションではチェックインボーナスを配布中ですこの機会にぜひご利用ください Thank you for attending our show tonight For those with the New Japan Collection app installed on your mobile device you can check in for bonus items The bonus is available to all who are in attendance today Thank you He's been crawling and sacrificing his life for 19 years as a pro wrestler to get this opportunity, one of the biggest matches, the only match that, this dream match against one of the greatest legends that is Minoru Suzuki. His idol, somebody that he's watched in high school idolizing, only to find out his idol isn't so nice. And in Autumn Attack, he said, to him in Japanese, that you are already dead. Very bold words. I think it, tonight to the night, he had a lot of experience with the Japanese style. Judo, karate, a whole lot of different things. Even though he can speak a little bit, yeah. Japanese too. Well, he, one of his mentors also is Josh Barnett. He's been working on his ground game. I mean, he's as ready as ever. As you alluded to, though, here's a man he looked up to, somebody he wanted to emulate, somebody he idolized, somebody who's, whose very presence in this industry hangs heavy everywhere he goes. Somebody, Hitori-san, you've known for a long time. Yeah, just like him. 
just you know he's gonna teach. He's gonna I know to teach. Yeah. No, not everyone. Yeah. But he knows the hand, so he can do it. So just I can teach him a lot of things. Yeah. Lots of mental things too. Absolutely. You need to have your mental game down when you face a guy as intimidating, as dangerous as Minoru Suzuki. There will be lessons learned tonight. There will be lessons taught tonight in this main event matchup. That is a first time ever matchup as well. As Dickinson confronts Suzuki. The challenge was laid down. Last month at Autumn Attack. But as you alluded to earlier, Alex, not too long ago, it was at a GCW event where Minoru Suzuki took on Dickinson's friend and partner, Joey Janela. And after beating him, when Chris Dickinson came to check on his friend, it was Suzuki who struck him from behind and kind of let him know just who he was. So Dickinson got a little bit of a, a wake-up call to sometimes, like you said, your idols aren't always the nice guys you expect them to be. I mean, come on, Tiger, do you think Suzuki's son is a nice guy? Yeah, he's uh, really independent. <laughs> yes, that's I know that He don't like uh, beach, he don't like a big company, he don't care. He think that he can go himself, but he's only successful. He does what he wants, he goes where he wants to. Dude. Yeah, really good. Very tough. Reputation that looms large in all pro wrestling. But the interesting thing is him and uh, Josh. Very good relation with them. Oh, yes? Yes. Yeah, Suzuki. Back, uh, stemming back to their MMA yeah. careers. That's right. And Josh Barnett has uh, also been a uh, the advice man, the mentor to Chris Dickinson yeah. to help him. Yes. So there is a connection between these two already in that regard. And here we go, a first time ever. And I, I can just feel the, the, the excitement here. This is... The Philadelphia crowd loves it. Suzuki been on a, a U.S. tour yes. of, of sorts as of late. Going everywhere, east coast to west coast, everywhere in between, so many events. He's shown up on AEW. He's been here on New Japan Strong. Chris Dickinson oh. trying to go for the sing single leg, but Minoru Suzuki is so well versatile. Grab the, the arm here, but look at that. Chris Dickinson finds himself yeah. on top. Oh. Very good. The mat game strong from Chris Dickinson. Dickinson as well, the stronger probably component here. He's got the size and strength advantage. That's right. But Suzuki has that experience in game. Oh, going for that leg lock, but Suzuki quickly alleviating the pressure. <laughs> Suzuki looked like an old school for the Carl Gott. Yes. yes. German guy. He, he was so respected with them. He got the, so many things. You know, psychology is fighting Suzuki on the suit. He understands the whole, the whole language of the fight. And right now, he is not intimidated at all by Chris Dickinson, letting him know you'll have to do a lot more oh. than that to beat me. Oh, oh! Chris Dickinson oh. showing what he's capable of, trying to Very tie good. up Suzuki. But but Suzuki at, trying to counter uh, with an ankle lock of his own. That's a dangerous. That pressure he's putting can tear your oh. ligaments in the knee because it's all connected right up to the oh, to yeah. the ankle. And let's be, let it be said too that this matchup was supposed to happen outside of New Japan for uh, another company, but due to the global pandemic and the situation, that match was canceled, much to Dickinson's chagrin. So you know he's happy to be getting this opportunity now into the cover and a kick out by Suzuki. Smart game plan by Dickinson. Yeah, very going, much. going for the cover and staying on top with that front face lock, just putting his weight on uh, Minoru Suzuki here. Now we talk about it. How Suzuki doesn't hang out with a lot of other people, but we had we would be remiss if we didn't say in two weeks' time he will team with his teammate Lance Archer in a rematch against John Moxley and Eddie Kingston in a street fight. Boy. They said that they had faced each other 
at AEW Grand Slam in that same tag match, but they wanted a rematch in a New Japan ring, and in two weeks, we will see it under Street Fight rules. Philly Street Fight. Come back, Tiger. Yeah. You gotta see yeah, it. Yeah, you'll have to watch that one. <laughs> yeah, I wanna see it. But we, Suzuki, the very uh, unique person, like an individual, believes in himself so much. Yes. You see it every time he steps in the ring, every time some his opponents try to get one up on him. And he some, has that way of staring them down. Oh. Sometimes when you think you've got him down, when you think you've got him pinned or locked up, he just stares you down, sometimes even laughs at you. <laughs> yes. Gets in your head. And now Suzuki here try, on top of Chris Dickinson, but Dickinson's got his legs wrapped around Suzuki. Going for that arm bar, great mat wrestling between the two. It's like a chess game between between them. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Move for move, hold for hold, trying to counter everybody's be your opponent at every turn. So oh. trying to break that hold to Look at apply that. that Kimura. Beautiful. Did you see the, the way what the way he move. used his knee? <laughs> he kept holding onto his wrist, used his knee to break the block from Dickinson. That's an incredible intelligence. And Alex, you always like to point out someone like Suzuki who looms so large but doesn't like to be called a legend. Yes. He doesn't like to be thought of as, as a legend or out of his prime or anything. He still feels very good, very, very much ready to go at all times. He's kicking as strong as ever. Yes. I mean, how long has he been on top? He's long, such a long career and still, still at, at the top of the game. Yeah, that's very hard. You know? Now here comes. Oh the my God! <laughs> yeah, he's good. What power by Chris Dickinson, showing no fear, no intimidation. These overhand chops as Dickinson laughs in the face of Suzuki. Oh my God! And Suzuki laughs right back. That's just vintage Suzuki. And once again. You feel oh, that, Tiger? Boy. You saw the sweat fly <laughs> off of Chris Dickinson's chest there, but he's ready for more. Oh. Oh. I mean, uh, Dickinson's got a good oh. poker face. Suzuki says to wait. Wants to be in a prime position. Yeah, he's in that lady, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh my God, you can see the, the swelling and the blistered red chest of Suzuki, my God. Dickinson with rapid fire shot. It's good. Big intensity. Oh, he came ready. Catches Whoa. the arm. There's the instincts of Suzuki though, tying him up You've in there. You've seen that before oh, from yeah. him. I saw him in Japan like that. Does it all over the world. Can wrap you up in those ropes, that cross arm breaker in the ropes. Dangerous at any point in this matchup. Weakening that arm and shoulder area, but Dickinson's still fine here. Yeah, he's good. Dickinson going back to the leg, trying to get those holds. Oh! Suzuki sees it, gets the kickoff anyway. And look at the chest of Minoru Suzuki. It is all lit up, it is red, and oh boy. Suzuki might be looking to do that street fight a couple weeks early. <laughs> We're gonna see a little preview. As those chops may have awoken something. Well, I mean, look, uh, Minoru likes to fight. He's oh, been yes. fighting all his life, and Dickinson is bringing the fight to him. That's good, though, good point. Oh, Suzuki with a 30 plus year career in this business that spans not only pro wrestling, but mixed martial arts, MMA. He has all kinds of disciplines under his belt. And oh boy. Wait a minute, but the referee is telling him that this, this is not allowed. This is dangerous. It could get disqualified. This isn't a street fight. Even though this is the ECW arena, this is not ECW rules necessarily. And Suzuki is none too pleased. The referee is the most hated man in Philadelphia tonight. 
I rest my case as Suzuki drives Dickinson into the ring post. Says I may not be able to use the chair as a weapon, but I'll use the very ring as one. Oh, oh, oh my God! I, I, I told you, I, he's, he, he's been talking yeah, badly he about you. I would never. Never. Be careful. What did I do? We should have been behind you. That was the scariest Whoa. moment of my entire life. Boy, boy. I saw my whole life flash before my eyes. <laughs> Tell my, my wife I love her. Oh, no. Referee Jerry so Marcus oh. in a bad position here. And Jeremy's begging, begging for his life. Oh, boy. Could Suzuki just be messing with him, though? Okay, okay, well. A little payback uh, for taking the chair away from him. You're lucky. Yes, very lucky, wow. ref. As look, Dickinson comes back in, trying to take control of the leg of Suzuki. Snapper, snapmares him to the ground, driving the knee to the back and stretching his arms back, weakening the shoulder even further. Now stepping over the arm. Oh! Switching it up. The bat game, very impressive. And more impressive, almost is the, the way Suzuki controls just the entire mood of this matchup. That's right. From, from the chair changing the mood to coming over here to me to, and playing with the referee to getting in the mind of Chris Dickinson. He just controls yeah. the very environment that he's in. Absolute ring general. And now Look. manipulating the joints. The oh wrist. my God! Boy. Lucky it's not broken as he bends and twists the arm of Chris Dickinson who gets his feet into the ropes. And we've seen many new generation uh, wrestlers adopting that style of limb manipulation the way that we just saw him do. Yes. I mean, he's inspired. He looks like each moment enjoy himself. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> he loves hurting his opponents, doesn't he? Inflicting pain. And we... They, Look at, look at the state Chris Dickinson. How many opponents have we seen literally do this kind of damage, this kind of control of a guy like Chris Dickinson? Not many. Picking him apart at the arm. The strikes. Dickinson oh, somehow ends. Oh, Beautiful. There's the strength. Wow. Yeah. If there's an advantage Dickinson has in this match, it might be his power and his strength, and he used it right there very effectively. He, as uh, Minoru was driving his arm down, he was able to roll forward and very fluidly land behind and drop him on his head. <laughs> Huge deadly German suplex. And now, oh! Dragon Screw turning oh, his attention to the knees good. of Suzuki once again. Oh man, right into that knee. Suzuki staying on his feet, though, staying on his feet. Finally taken down, but the knee has been targeted. Chris Dickinson has a very strong submission. Yeah, game. almost. He's going to get the big, big chance now. And the STF here. Almost. He's got it, but Suzuki's very close to the ropes there. Right the ropes. And notice him not, not going for the ropes right, right away. He wants to see if he can withstand this. He wants to see if he can get out on his own. That is an interesting point. I mean, he's right he, there. He could grab the rope. You know he could. He look at it. He's up. His going is fading. But Dickinson has he had a deep hook. That is a lot In of that pressure. SCF, absolutely. Suzuki looking like he might be out of it. Oh, look at his eyes. Look at it. Wide open. But yes. They almost start to go oh. backwards. And finally. Out of necessity, getting to the ropes, breaking the hold from Chris Dickinson. That is interesting at the point you make. Maybe he wanted to see just He's a how proud far. Competitor. He believes in himself, just like Hitori san said, yeah. he believes in himself so much that he can beat anyone, can get out of anything. I think so. Yeah. Very confident performer, competitor. As Dickinson stays focused on that leg. Oh! Dropping that hammer down. Going oh. for the dragon screw. No. Oh, look oh. at that. Wow. Suzuki 
Countering right into the arm breaker as Dickinson tries desperately to block it. He's got to let go again. And he's hyperextending that arm. Oh my God. Snapping that arm. And he's Dickinson. Oh boy. Keeps going back to grip, to that grip, to that mutual grip, trying to keep it from totally snapping his arm. But the damage has been done. You saw the extension that he had on that arm bar. And the smile comes across to Suzuki's face. Dust your shoulders off. Just another day at the office. And you know, and uh, Tiger, you know when he goes, when he goes for that rear naked choke hold yeah. and that Carl Gotch style pile driver. Yes. It's over. Oh, oh my God. I Chris like wow. it. <laughs> Laughing in the face of that boot from Suzuki. Oh my God. How is Dickinson able to absorb that? He got good shape. He's in incredible shape. An incredibly tough performer proving it all right now. Oh! Not low and not going down without any oh. kind of a fight and grabs that leg. Oh my God. And that one shook Suzuki down a little bit, but it lit him up as well. Look at the look at the eyes. Look at that face. Oh, oh. Ready fighter. Oh, and we're back, back to where we started. The test of resolve. Oh, oh man, an overhead chop. But the mood has changed from earlier in this match. There is an added intensity oh at this point in the match. How impressive is Chris Dickinson holding yes. his own? Standing toe to toe. Exactly. Oh, Suzuki lining him up, warming him up. Oh, oh my goodness. God. <laughs> it hurts me to watch. Hurt me too, trust me. They're going back and forth here. The sweat exploding off the body of these competitors. Who will give in this scenario? Oh boy. Most of them, they don't know how to give up. <laughs> no. That's right. None of them know how to give either up. Either man, and I don't think either man will. They would pass out. They would, their bodies would give out before their mind would let them, before their heart would say no. And Suzuki got the upper hand on this exchange. Oh, but Chris Dickinson trying to outmaneuver, trips him down back oh, to that leg, move. going for the SDF oh, one more time. Boy. But Suzuki saw it coming. Rolling out of that armbar again. Dickinson. Oh, oh my God, God drops oh my it on God. his head. Into the cover wow. goes Dickinson, that's Dude. gotta be. Oh what? my God. I thought it was one, two, three. I think oh you, my us, God. and the entire arena here in Philadelphia thought it was one, two, three. What a brain buster. The definition oh, well, yes. of brain buster. Wow. Minoru barely able to lift his shoulder. Very, very, huh? I mean, that <laughs> is a that paralyzing is, brain that buster. That is the heart of a warrior. Oh! Let's not forget, Dickinson's got some knockout power in his hands. Yeah, He's got serious much. kicks. Lining up Suzuki. Oh, who's still where the there? And there it is. The rear naked choke. Many this. men has he finished with yes. that rear naked choke hold into the gotch style power driver. But look at Dickinson. Dickinson trying to fight him off. But oh, Suzuki snaps it right back on. He wants to find that he wants to put Dickinson. No more, no more posturing. No more fights back and forth. He wants to put Dickinson away. And as much as Dickinson tries to find his way out, Suzuki holding on. Oh, but oh. he's got him there. He's got what him tight. Matches. 
He will not let go. And down. One. His moments away. Could be Dickinson starting to fade a little bit. Oh my God. Whoa. As Suzuki laying oh. in forearms to the jaw of Chris Dickinson. Oh! Dickinson, who where? just woke up? Where does he get that? I cannot believe that these two men are still going. The shots they've thrown. Oh my God. The hits that have been exchanged. I have not seen any man in modern times stand toe to toe with Minoru Suzuki like that, not bringing like this. the heat to him. But Suzuki, the combo, the left, the oh. right, all upside, oh. and there is once more time to the rear naked Choco Suzuki. Turn He's it going around. for it. Oh boy. Could be it. Suzuki's calling for the crowd here who rise to their feet here in Philadelphia, hooking in that God style oh. pile driver. Oh. And, it. and into the cover. That is it. Wow. What a match. That was a classic. Very classic. My God. Incredible showing. Incredible matchup. Wow. What a treat it has been for us to have you, Tiger Hattori yeah, Santa, to be here I with just, us. I just picked the Pozo. Absolutely. Both both competitors yeah. did so well. So well, man. Minoru Suzuki is very tough, but Chris Dickinson yeah. Yeah. brought the fight to him. Chris is so good. And now Suzuki got something to say here in Philadelphia. What a match. John Moxley, Eddie Kingston. Philly street fight. I cannot miss. I'm gonna see. Oh! That's his way of saying thank you. Wow. That matchup will be incredible. The rematch. Tomorrow night. Moxley. What do you think? Can you see him live? Please. You just oh. Please no, please no. Please no. Please no. He's, he's please here no. in peace. Me again. I know he's, oh my God. He's been your Ooh. demon for so many years. <laughs> I'm sorry that you had to experience that again. I'm retired. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he doesn't care, just like he doesn't care what he does to Moxley and Kingston when he teams with Lance Archer to take them on in a Philly street fight. We'll see that in two weeks on New Japan Strong.